So in 2.3, we're talking about classifying functions, and we're talking about classifying functions uh, using two main pairs of distinctions. And the first one is going to be talking about the difference between one-to-one -one and onto functions. But before I do that, I want to talk about um, a new type of notation that we're going to see. And that's this notation over here in red. And this is going to be a new way of defining a function, but we're going to define our function now kind of based on the sets that I'm sending numbers to and from. So I'm going to use a to represent my domain, right? The set of all the possible x values that I'm dealing with. And you know, normally we would pair domain with range. Uh, and I'll explain this word later in a minute, but we're also going to call it the codomain. Uh, these are not synonyms. There is a little bit of a difference, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But what this notation is really doing is just saying, I'm going to take all of the elements in A, in the set A, and I'm going to send them to all of the elements or some of the elements in the set B. Right. So for example, maybe I have my function that sends all the real numbers to all the real numbers, or maybe all the real numbers to just the integers if I want to make sure these are distinct. They don't have to be. And then I'm going to define my function. So maybe my function is, and this is not necessarily the case, but I define my function however. So maybe it's like the floor function. So say I just take the, uh, the greatest integer uh, less than or equal to my number. And that would be kind of a way to define that function. So you're going to see this notation kind of throughout. So based on that definition and based on some other definitions here, let's kind of jump in. So if I have x as an element in my domain, then the function evaluated at that value, so I have some kind of an output, right? That's what we would normally call our y values. But we're also going to call it an image of x under f, or the output, right? We're used to calling it an output, now we're going to call it an image. So based on an image, if I have a function, I can call it one-to-one -one if every element in the range is the image of exactly one element in the domain. So every element in the range is paired with exactly one element in the domain. We'll come back to what that is in a minute. On the flip side, we have what the book calls many-to-one. And that's just if I have multiple x's being mapped to the same y, which would be my first example here, right? My domain has five distinct values, but four of them are being mapped to the number one, right? I have one, two, three, and four. So this is many to one, or more importantly, just not one to one. On the flip side, I have my graph over here, and I can never find a point where one x, or sorry, where multiple x's are being mapped to the same y, so this would be called one-to-one, -one, and this is going to be much more important than many-to-one. You might have heard when you learned how to take inverses of functions about the horizontal line test, and that's exactly what we're going to use when we talk about one-to-one. Uh, -one. If I can pass my horizontal line through a graph, and the graph passes the horizontal line test, right, I never intersect in more than one place, then my graph is one-to-one. -one. However, if I take my horizontal line, and I try to pass it through my graph at any point. You see that I have intersections in multiple places at the same time. Well, that's a problem. And then it's not one-to-one, -one, and it's what the book would call many-to-one. So there's the horizontal line test. So I mentioned this distinction between codomain and range. And range is just a subset of the codomain. So codomain is all the possible images of x under f. Right, so maybe I have my set of all of the possible options I could send my x to. That's going to be codomain. Well, the range is all of the um, actual images that I'm actually using. So all the image, images of elements in the domain. That's not necessarily all of the elements in the codomain. That could be just a subset of them. Right, so we would say that the range is a subset or the same as the codomain, and that's what this little round-looking less than or equal to sign looks like. It's a subset or the same set, um, such as less than or equal to, right, as the codomain. 
So now we get to onto, and onto can be a little bit confusing to read, but it's a little more intuitive than it sounds. A function is onto if every element in B in the codomain is an image of an element in A, the domain. Right, so if every single element in my codomain has a match from some element in A, then I have an onto function. The way this works and kind of the trick here is if the codomain is equal to the range, then my function is onto. The math way of saying is, is kind of here. It's a little bit scary looking, but it's not too bad. It's just to say if for every single element in B, right, for all B in the codomain, I can find or there exists an A in the domain such that f of a is b, right? So for every single element in b, I can find an, a domain, an element in the domain, such that f of that element a gives me b. For every single one, then it's on to. So the trick here is to use something similar to the horizontal line test, but we're only going to pass it through the codomain. So as long as I can find function, it doesn't necessarily have to pass once or twice or never. As long as I can find function everywhere over my codomain, then it's onto. So here's my first example where I'm going to use the entire real numbers. Right? My codomain is the entire set of real numbers. So if this is an onto function, I should be able to take this horizontal line and move it through the entire real number line on the y-axis and uh-oh you see right here that I don't get any function here. There are no function values here. So this is not onto. But if I restrict my codomain and I say, well, let's just look at all the positive real numbers, then that is onto, right? I can put this horizontal line anywhere and I can find a function value. It doesn't necessarily need to be one function value, right? This is actually a many to one function. But that's okay. All we care about right now is, is it onto? And it is onto. So we're going to pass the horizontal line test through the codomain. If I wanted to make a function onto, right, if I wanted to take this first example and make it onto, all I would have to do is restrict the codomain so that it's equal to the range, right? You see that now that my codomain is equal to the range of this function, my function becomes onto.